Welcome back to Stay Tuned for Danger, part two. So last video, we met our contact. We've She's the only suspect that we've met so far. She gave us the lowdown on her co-star Rick Garland receiving these death threats, and we snooped around her house. And now we are at Worldwide Broadcasting, which is where Light of Our Love is filmed. So if you'll notice, we are right in the midst of Maddie's dressing room. So I believe it is time to snoop. So that's one of my favorite things to do. Let's see, we have another script. So guess what? It's time for me to act again and show off my talents. All right, camera picks up Yuri Danner as he walks through the living room doors and enters the front hallway. He greets Serena Livingstone. Sten, I thought it was Sten, but it looks like, I don't even know. Anyways, well, good evening. I never expected you to darken my door. I want to talk to you about Rory. I know. You know what? You know that that yellow-bellied, poor excuse of a man doesn't deserve your love, Serena? Is that what you know? I, I don't know. Of course you don't. But don't worry your pretty little head about Rory. He'll get what he deserves. And I can tell you, my love, it isn't Serena Livingston. What do you mean? I love Rory and I despise you. You used me to seek revenge on your brother, your own flesh and blood, and now you want to drag me down to your level? But I won't do that. I have more strength than you think. Ah, oh, Serena, always playing the femme fatale. Do you really think Patronize me, Yuri. I'm no longer in your power. I'm free of your evil spell. End scene. My goodness, I am shocking myself. I can't even imagine your sh being in your shoes, being subjected to this incredible acting that I'm giving out. And a note in French. So guess what? Don't speak French. And then we have a newspaper that is also mentioning Rick Arlen potentially leaving Light of Our Love, and that might mean that the show is in deep doo-doo, so that wouldn't be good. At least, well, it would be good for Rick, because, I mean, new opportunities. Let's take a look here in Serena's drawer. Serena, her name is Maddie. My goodness. And what the heck? Either Maddie's putting on her lipstick very aggressively, or there's a reason that it is now flattened. Who would do that to their lipstick? She needs to learn how to take better care of her things. I am telling you. If I could just back out and not keep doing the same thing. And a word search. Guess what? I don't really want to do a word search. Ooh, look at all those perfumes. Smelling good. I bet Maddie's the kind of person that just like wears them all at the same time. Honestly, ooh, fan mail, but we're not going to read that because we have a little respect for her privacy. Not much, but some. And a nice little metal disc with her initials on it. It says, a mask of sweet serenity, a cloak of loving kindness, meant to sway the heart to trust and fill the eyes with blindness. Now, I don't know if that's supposed to be a good or a bad thing, but okay. And here we have a note that's been torn to shreds, but I want to know what it says. So we're going to put these pieces back together. Try to, I don't even know. This could be another note from Rick because I don't know if things ended so good with them. So would she be desperate enough to send out these death threats? I don't know, man. Is Maddie capable? I just feel like this is one big soap opera, though, and I'm not that well-versed on soap operas. I think the most experience I have with soap operas is through Friends when Joey is on, what, is, what show is he on? Days of Our Lives, and he's Dr. Drake Ramore. That is pretty much the extent of my experience with soap operas, but, you know, maybe they're good. Just, the cameras, like, always bugged me. Like, I don't know, just the quality and clarity or whatever. It just looks different than, like, normal TV cameras, if you know 
if you know what I'm saying. I'm really not making that much sense right now. See, look, the pieces fit perfectly together when you can get them all nice. I need an N. Is how just how does Nancy even have like how does she have the patience for this? I would never be able to do this in my life. I would just look at it and be like, you know what? Not worth it. Never gonna know what that says. And like half the time I don't even know what I'm looking for. Maybe ooh, goes right there. Um yeah, I mean, and I'm glad I'm glad at least in this part of the game the sound doesn't work because the sounds that the note, like the little note pieces make when you're picking them up, they're so annoying. Like they just make this little twinkle noise. I can't even describe it. Just be so happy that you don't have to deal with it. I feel like I'm stuck. I don't even, <laughs> I hate this. No, that doesn't go there. Oh! Why? I should just give up. <laughs> Does this go... Oh! No, I feel like that would fit. Here, I'll go backwards on this. There we go. Oh, and that goes right there. Look at that. See, like, I don't know. I've just never been interested in soap operas. They just don't appeal to me. I feel like I used to watch, if this isn't a soap opera, but this is like explaining why I'm not really that into soap operas. But I used to watch Pretty Little Liars, like all the time. I would look forward to every episode and all that. But it just started getting so dramatic. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, they'd reveal A, like, 15 times, and then they're like, oh, now you have to deal with me. And it's like another person is A again. And I just, I lost the will to even keep up. I'm just like, I don't even care anymore. You know, it's like, I don't care who's A. Just put me out of my misery with this. It was just, that was pretty ridiculous. Oh, dang it. Well, that still goes there. I feel like I'm just messing myself up even more. No, that goes right there. Okay, I don't know why I'm getting so horrifically messed up. Who knows? That same thing kind of happened when I was watching Glee, though. Because I used to love, love, love Glee. Like, Finn, what was his last name? can't even remember now, but Finn was like, oh my gosh, so good. I loved Finn. I thought I was going to marry him, but just Glee started getting so dramatic too. And then everybody was just dating each other. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but it just got to the point where I was like, I can't watch this anymore. This is getting ridiculous. <laughs> Sorry, Glee. I feel like I'm so messed up because this all fits together, but that doesn't go there. Oh my gosh, what did I do? I messed myself up so much. I think this all goes right here, but then I so messed myself up. What have I done? Okay, so that obviously goes right there. Okay, we're back on track. <laughs> Great! I totally just messed everything up. Sorry about that. But, you know, sometimes you can't always get what you want, even if you want to finish this darned puzzle. Oh my gosh, if I knew this was going to take this long, I would have started it. In all honesty, that goes right there. This better be, like, an incriminating letter where it literally says, I know who did this. I can't figure out what goes with that T. Oh, now what does this, where did work go? 
I so messed all of this up. That's okay. Everybody makes mistakes. Does that go right there? You know what? I'm saying it does go there. Okay, we're making good progress. Hey! No, we were making good progress. Oh! I did it. <laughs> I just heard my computer make the little noise like it's thinking. Okay, so it says, sorry that it has to work out like this, but there's no choice at the moment. You must trust me on this. We both know what needs to be done, and I am taking the steps, however drastic, to see that it is finished. As we discussed, I just need your support. When all this blows over and everything calms down, we can be together. Now, what the heck is that talking about? I'm thinking it has to do with Rick, but, um, details maybe? So now I guess we just head on over to the studio so we can watch, we can watch a little bit be filmed, a little scene, get a little behind the scenes action. Now this scene might look really choppy on my game since it's gonna just skip right over the parts that are only sound, but for the most part, it's all good. So right now they're just talking with the director, kind of figuring it all out. You know, just casual discussions. And then that, of course, is the control booth. Gearing everything up. Let's see. And now they are acting officially. Which incredible acting right there. Uh-oh. That doesn't look good. And oh, Rick, watch out! <laughs> And Rick was almost hit by a light, one of those Klieg lights. And he's not real impressed by that. He seems a little grouchy, but, you know, I would be too if I were almost killed. So let's snoop around to see if we can find any clues. And it looks like the clamp on that light was just sawed right off. So we'll have to keep that in mind, see if we can find any more clues as to that. Look at this, you can like look around at all the angles of the set. We have a clock right here, which we will deal with later. You'll notice it was missing one of the hands and now I can't back up, there we go. Lovely. Oh, here's the teleprompter. Rory, I have to talk to you. I don't want to see you, Serena. No, Rory, don't go. Your time is running out, Rick Arlen. You'd better kiss your career and your life goodbye because the end is near. Looks like somebody was messing with the teleprompter again. Who did this? What the heck? Guys, we thought we went over this. This isn't a funny joke. Because Maddie said that somebody, they all thought it was a joke because somebody's like, oh, I'm gonna, everybody's gonna get a real kick out of this. Then we're gonna take this screwdriver here because we will need it later. And I think this is the last game that just expects you to grab everything because if you don't grab that screwdriver, there's a scene in the future, the very near future, where you will die if you don't grab it. And then guess what, we don't have the key for this. And then I would love to get up here to go observe what happened with the light. But this is stuck, so we're going to need to find something to loosen that up. I'm having such a hard time moving around here. We have to, like, click everything at a certain angle. And then we can't get up in the control booth yet because there's some sort of weird code. Like, what even, what even are those symbols? I guess it's as good as mine. All right. So... I think we've seen everything. Let's get out of here. And listening in on this conversation, this top part is Rick's agent. And then, you know, he's saying he's obviously upset that his client was almost killed. And then this bottom part right here is William Pappas. And he's saying that they're getting to the bottom of this and that the set is already closed to visitors. Which, darn it, we are visitors. So now we're going to have to find a different way to get in the studio if we're going to want to even get to the bottom of this. How can we find the, su the, yeah, the suspect? No, the culprit. <laughs> How can we even find the culprit if the set is closed to visitors? So we are going to talk to Maddie. 
and she is obviously upset. I mean, Rick was almost just killed right in front of her. And it was really weird timing, as she is pointing out, because he's been getting all these threats, and now he's almost killed on stage. And now she's going to leave us because she's too upset to deal with this. Well then, left alone again, but we've already looked every at everything we need to in here. So, next video, look out for that. We are going to meet the rest of our suspects, and then we're going to have to find another way to get into the studio, because if we aren't even allowed here, then what are we going to do? So, stay tuned for danger. <laughs> Thanks for watching.